following is intended only for mature audiences. Open your ears and lube up your butthole. It's time for the What Do We Call It podcast. Now, here's your host, it's J-Man. Welcome to the What Do We Call It podcast. I'm J-Man. This is Tiny. My 10-year-old. Oh, boy. I tell you what. She has been having issues with the beast for at least six months where they argue. Too much like each other? I don't know, but it boils down to the juice. My oldest Mm -hmm. hides in her room when this happens. Okay. My 10-year-old, I've taught her, I'm like, you can't just let mom steamroll you. You're allowed to reply back and advocate for yourself, which she tries to do, which then drives the beast nuts because anytime you try to contradict her, she fucking goes ballistic. Oh, yeah. Most of the problem stems from her other kid that's not mine that she treats like a fucking baby and lets her get away with everything and forces the other two to cater to this one. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can't tell you how many times she's like, well, I can't bring the girls to you right now. You'll have to come pick them up even though it was her turn to drive. Sure. She's like, it's snowing. I can't bring Lulu out. It's cold. I'm not bringing Lulu out. I'm like, what? She's not a Fabergé egg. Uh, but she did it before with the other kids, right? Right. I mean, uh, oh. So it got to the point where she's like, you need to come pick them up. And I'm like, so you won't take out your kid, but you know I'm going to have to take out my other two kids that are the same age almost and younger. Fucking thumbs up for being considerate, you cunt. Such a game player and so goddamn lazy. It's so selfish. Oh, That's absolutely. Selfish behavior. So this is where this is going, is it's coming to a head. And it gets to the point where... The beast. In her infinite wisdom is like, I can't do this shit anymore with you, okay? You need to go to your dad's. And it begins a cycle, starting in the middle of July, where she will call me crying, my child. Mm-hmm. And say, I can't take it. Mom won't stop screaming at me. I don't feel safe here. I don't want to be here. And the beast will text me and say, your daughter is such a fucking smart mouth that I'm ready to backhand her one. You need to come pick her ass up. I'm wow. Like, okay. So I do. And yeah. here's the funny thing. The beast keeps threatening to file a motion to get back joint legal custody, not physical. <laughs> well, how is that going to happen? And she says, and I quote, I've saved every text message from you since 2021 and I will submit them all because I have them in a database. Now, for reference... She did this shit with two years worth or whatever of fucking text messages, select ones, for our our custody trial. 60 pages. Okay. That made her look like a fucking maniac. Sure. And did not have the effect that she wanted. So she's saying these things, come pick up your fucking daughter and shit, like I'm ready to backhand her. I can't do this shit anymore. She makes me not want to be a mom. In the text messages that she thinks she's going to submit now. Right. And she doesn't even realize how she's going to make herself look so fucking bad. That I keep telling her, I'm like, these text messages are going to help out big time. She's like, oh, they will. Karma's going to get you. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> you dumb bitch. Uh, this is not going to go how you think it's going to go. One time in particular, I'm watching wrestling and I had gotten my daughter and I have her and she's like, well, bring her back now. So I brought her back. And I get back in time for the main event. I was gone for like six minutes. I shit you not. Ten minutes later, she calls me again. The Beast. And says, come pick her ass back up and take her for the night. Come on. All my daughter did was make one comment. I don't even remember what the comment was. Because this is months ago. Sure. I've been waiting to record this one. And as the story unfolds, I want it to be not, you know, seven episodes. It can be like one. (laughs) That dirty bitch, four times, four times I had to pick up my daughter. And here's where things got a little interesting. August 30th was open house night for the older one. Sure. For middle school. We go. Now, my daughter doesn't want to stay with... The beast. The beast. is like, take her too and feed them in her cordial, uh, ever so motherly way. You, do, uh, so my son's mom, sidebar, will do that too, where she's like, she has to have control or like she's telling you what to do or directing what's going to happen. And it's like... Stop. You don't tell me what to do. I know how to take care of our child. They like, just, it's like they think that if they're not forcing you to do what they want, they're not winning. 
yeah. they have a win at all costs mentality. Yep, one hundred percent. It's very narcissistic. It's very toxic. I hate to use buzzwords, but with the beast, I mean. As much as she likes to tell me I'm narcissistic, that bitch has NPD, I'm fucking convinced. Oh, There's yeah. like eight metrics, and I, she meets five of the criteria. We've talked about that before, yeah. It's fucking nuts. So anyways, I take them to open house, and as we leave, my wife is at a nearby park with our other two kids. I want to see them. We're going to stop. We get there, and the juice, who's pissed at me for saying something to her in a classroom in front of other people, and I, quote, embarrassed her so bad... Yeah, that she she house. texts the beast says they haven't eaten and I've taken them to a park and then she blows my phone up you're not supposed to take them to a park that's not the deal you're supposed to take them to open house for 20 minutes and then bring them back I'm like open house wasn't 20 minutes we had to go to seven different classrooms and meet teachers and I don't know if you realize she has to crisscross the building multiple fucking times and there's like a couple thousand people here tonight so there's no just bing bang boom right you gotta wait you got to wait. So she demands I bring them home. And I'm like, okay, I will. No, do it now. I'm like, are you home? Well, no, but I will be soon. I'm like, do they have a key? No. Okay, well, what the fuck? Did you feed them? Not yet. Well, then feed them and bring them to me. I should be home by then. I take them to Cub Foods. We get some food. Sure. We're eating the food in the car in the parking lot. The beast calls to check where the fuck I am. And she's like, you need to bring them home now. It's my day. You're interfering with my custody right now and I don't like the way that you're alienating me from our children and turning them against me I'm like fuck this shit I put it on speakerphone and I go at no point have I told the girls not to love you I've just pointed out all the mistakes you've made and that I don't understand why they're not more mad at you okay so you can shit can that and as far as bringing them to you you said feed them well they can eat here I'm like we're just having a quick car picnic why do you have such a problem if you weren't home with me spending a few extra minutes well, you need to bring them home now. It's my way and I do it my way now. Yeah. And then she says something about my 10-year-old. And I'm like, you know, you need to realize that your anxiety causes you to lash out, which then you lash out at her and gives her anxiety. Well, you're not going to tell me how to live, okay? You're not a psychologist. Her usual, you're not this, you're not mm-hmm. that. And she's screaming and screaming into the phone. And the girls, and I'm just like, shh. This lesson, I'm giving them a taste of what I normally somewhat right. shield them from. Right. And they're both just like jaw on the floor, like, oh my God. And she says something about the kid again, my 10 year old. And she's like, well, then you can just keep her for the night then. But you need to bring them home. So my 10 year old goes, you just said to keep me. Which one is it? Keep me or bring me home? And she's like, shut up. Wow. And I'm like, just so you know, you're on speakerphone. They've heard all of this tirade. She's like, that's great. I'm going to tell the judge that you did that. We'll see how long you get custody still of having them all the time. All right. Karma's going to bite you in the ass. For exposing them to her words? Yep. Okay. Because I'm supposed to somehow shield them from her true nature because yeah. someone might see it as me trying to taint her relationship with them. But in reality, it's just like, this is what I deal with. This is what you're going to have to deal with. Right. With her, because it, she's not going to change. This is your mom. So I hang up, and I'm like, well, I guess we better get going. That's going to go over real well once you get there, right? And I did, and I dropped him off, and she's yelling at me in the driveway. And then she says some other shit, and I'm like, that's fine. When we get to court, we'll, we'll hear all about it, right? And she says something else, and it's like, so what? Like... You know, we get there and you're going to, if I admit that I might have had a beer recently, you're going to hold that against me. I'm like, well, our custody agreement does say no use of mood altering chemicals that are non-doctor prescribed. But hey, you know, you're going to do what you're going to do anyway. Oh, bitch. And I leave right. and I'm gone for 15 minutes and I get a call. Come you come pick her up right now. What is wrong with this woman? That is August 30th. Okay. Okay. Did you go back and pick her up, by the way? I did. Okay. I did. It's bullshit, and my daughter was getting sick of it. But the key here is it's either phone calls or text messages or a combination of both, and there's a fucking trail of this shit. Now, whether she submits all the texts or not, I'm to the point where I'm going to put the kids on the fucking stand. And if they have to talk to a guardian ad litem, I don't give a fuck. Yeah. And say, you tell the truth. I don't care if you don't want mom to get mad at you. It's bullshit. A few days later... I shit you not, I'm hanging out with my wife at her house. It's late. I get a text message. 
She basically says, our daughter's out of control. She thinks she needs to be institutionalized or put on a psych hold because she's crazy. And she got so worried about her behavior that she hid all the knives in the kitchen. What kind of shit is that? Seems uh, extreme or exaggerated a little bit, but okay. Hyperbole is not a strong enough word because our daughter has never made any mention of self-harm. Yeah. And I talked to my daughter and she's like, she took the knives away? Why? What am I going to do with them? She's not even cognizant of what you would do with knives to hurt yourself. Right. So this goes on and on and on. So for 45 minutes, I'm like, well, I'll come pick her up right now. No, she's going to bed. You're not going to take her on my day. I'm like, but you just said you want her out of here and you're scared of her. And she's saying she's scared to be there with you because you're fucking insane. Now, those aren't the words she used. She's like, mom's crazy right now. Right. I don't want to be here. I call the cops. They call me on my way home. I'm like, what are we going to do here? Because at this point, it's fucking like 12, 15 in the morning. Okay. Yeah. Well, where's your daughter? I'm like, in bed as far as I know. But here's the situation. Here's what's been going on. It's getting to the point where there was an incident in July. Not long after that first time she made me pick her up. They were at Goodwill. She's too lazy to do laundry and too broke to afford to pay her water bill. So she was going to go to Goodwill and buy him a couple new outfits of fucking thrift clothing. Sure. To not have to do laundry. A few bucks each, yeah. So they get to the counter. She makes them wait outside. One of them says something to the little one. She starts crying. The beast comes outside. Fucking blows up. Like in the vestibule of a Goodwill. And then takes it outside the door and is still screaming. Screaming! Both of them said this. The staff all came to the door to watch because they were worried. Sure. Another woman walked up and said, You need to stop abusing your kids like that. She said, Mind your own business, you stupid little cunt. You don't know the story. Sure, so she takes it out on that lady. Yeah. I mean, that happened while I was at work. So when I got off of work, I went to Goodwill. Yeah, was there. I talked to the shift staff. Nobody could recall it. Interestingly enough, but here's the takeaway. My 10 year old didn't want to go home or stay there that night. Mm -hmm. And she didn't. It's one of the nights she came with me. My 12 year old said she almost called CPS on her mom. God damn. Wow. Yeah. So now I have taught them both that it's okay to call the cops if you feel unsafe. And I made them memorize the number to county dispatch, not even 911. No. Yeah. Problem is the beast pays for their phones, controls their phones. So they're scared to do it. Yeah. And why that's important is about three weeks ago, another incident, my daughter's crying, says she doesn't want to be there, says she wants to call the cops, but she's too scared to. So she has articulated that she does not feel safe, but cannot call out of fear of retribution from her mother. She's like, if I call and they come here, it's just going to get worse. She's going to get more mad. Not concerned that her mom's going to get in trouble, but that her mom's going to get more mad. There's two different sides to that concern, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's a different level of fear at that point. That's how fucking domestic abuse victims think. If I turn him in, it'll just get worse. Right. I offered to come pick her up, but here's the beast. Well, wait. Did she ask you to pick her up, or are you just offering? Because if you're just offering and she doesn't want to leave, I'm not giving up my night. I'm like, you're saying get her out of here. She doesn't want to be there. She's locked herself in her room, and... The beast's way of getting her to open the door was to say, if you don't open the door, I'm going to call the cops on you. And I'm going to make them take you to the hospital because you're acting mental. She is fucking terrorizing our 10-year-old. So now I'm like, what the fuck? I'm going to call the cops then. I call dispatch. I explain it. They have a cop call me. I talk to the cop. He's like, we'll go over there. I'm like, do you want me to meet you or what? He's like, you stay put for now. Sure. But I'll call you back. Now they go there. My daughter barricaded herself in her room and then called my wife, who was at her house. As the cops are there, she's on the phone with my wife. My wife's like, I'm going to come get you. She gets over there. She brokers a peace deal with the cops and the beast and my daughter. They're going to avoid each other for the night. One of those things, yeah. Yeah, I've heard of that solution before. So anyways, my wife gets here. It's two minutes from the beast's house to here. Okay. Wife comes in the back door and I hear scream crying. She's got my 10 year old on the phone saying, as soon as the cops left, she started screaming at me again. What do I do? And I said, I will call the cops back. My wife's like, put a shirt on. We're going over there. Cause I was just sitting at the table editing. We go over there. Cause I called the cop back on his cell phone and I'm like, 
As soon as you left, she went back at her. We need to get back over there now. He's like, all right, my partner, I'll turn around. We meet. We're across the street. The cops go in and talk to my daughter. And the beast. They come out. One of them brings my wife back in. I stay in the car because I'm not going to be a help. Mm, as soon as the beast sees me, she's going to go ballistic. Yeah. And with uniformed officers there, she's going to feel like she's losing and she's going to spiral. Sure. My daughter comes down the driveway with my wife and we're talking. And the cop comes to talk to me. And he's like, she's decided she's going to spend the night. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. What the fuck? You just said that you don't feel safe. You locked yourself in your room. We've been here twice with the cops in fucking 25 minutes. Yeah. And you're going to stay? The point is to get you away from her so there's a brokerage of peace that is maintained here. So for you to say you're going to stay, that's really wishy-washy. And I'm going to remind you of the boy who cried wolf principle that you can say it's too bad so many times. That eventually, if you don't fucking act on it, people are going to stop believing you. Well, like, yeah, this is what you created, or you're not willing to get out. Yeah. Yeah. She spent the night. Ugh. <laughs> and then my wife and I just came back to the house and sat here just shaking our fucking heads, and it's like, Jesus Christ. Yeah. You can only, you know, that old saying, you can lead a horse to water. You can only set people up for success. They still have to walk through that door sometimes, and gosh, that's frustrating. So, what happened? Police report filed. You know, each time that I called and they're explaining the situation and my concerns and what I'm telling them, my daughter's saying, and it got a little bit better, but I can't tell you why it got a little bit better until the next episode, which is related to this. All right. Interact with the show on Twitter at what do we call it? That is at what do we call it? You can find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash group slash what do we call it? Podcast show for the what do we call it? Podcast. I'm J-Man. This is Steiny. And that's the end. Meow.